Yu is a young and kind boy who suffered from a tough childhood. His parents didn't treat him with love and care like most parents do. They compared him to a demon and constantly verbally abused him. Sadly, the verbal abuse quickly escalated to physical abuse, and at one point, Yu's father even tried to kill him. Though he managed to survive, he lost his parents in the process. Afterward, Yu was taken to an orphanage where he met the director who introduced him to Mika and other kids. Although they were welcoming and kind, Yu was still traumatized by his past experiences and couldn't bring himself to trust anyone. He believed that he didn't need a family since he already had one and suffered terribly from it. Despite Yu's reluctance to socialize, the other kids in the orphanage made their best efforts to befriend him and help him whenever he needed it. Eventually, Yu began to open up and started to see them as his new family. However, their happy lives were soon disrupted by a deadly virus that killed everyone who was 13 years old or older. Yu and the other young kids were the only ones who survived, but their safety didn't last long. Vampires took advantage of the situation and captured the kids to raise them as livestock. The orphanage was no exception and they were all transported to a subterranean city. Now, four years later, you and the other kids are forced to donate their blood every day. But he's sick and tired of living on this human farm, he wants to escape. While venting to Mika, they suddenly witness two vampires cruelly stepping on and kicking a couple of young kids who had been innocently drawing on the floor. Yu's heart ached at the sight, and he couldn't bear to see the children suffer. Driven by anger and courage, he charged at the vampires to protect the kids. However, Yu was just a 12-year-old boy, and he was no match for the powerful, grown-up vampires. One of them grabbed Yu and dangled him over the edge of the walkway, threatening to drop him. Mika, terrified of losing his friend, frantically tried to apologize for Yu's actions, but the vampires paid him no heed. Just when all seemed lost, Farid, a noble vampire, appeared and stopped the others from hurting Yu. Mika greeted Farid with a smile, and the noble vampire invited him to his mansion that night. Mika agreed, leaving Yu puzzled about his friend's connection to the vampire noble. That evening, as Yu lay on the rooftop, one of the orphans called him in for dinner. Inside, the kids were overjoyed to be eating curry, and the one cooking told them to thank Mika for providing it. Yu noticed Mika's absence and inquired about it, only to learn that he had gone to Farid's mansion. He realized that Mika must have traded his blood for the ingredients to make the curry, and the thought left him unable to enjoy the meal. When Mika returned home later that night, Yu confronted him. Excitedly, Mika revealed that he had stolen a map and a gun from Farid's mansion, giving them a chance to escape this prison. Filled with hope, they woke up the other kids and made their way through the underground city toward freedom. Just as they were about to reach the exit, Farid emerged, happily explaining that he had allowed them to explore his mansion and find an escape route only to cruelly dash their hopes at the last moment. He then proceeded to mercilessly kill the children one by one, until only Mika and Yu remained. Determined to save his friend, Mika grabbed the gun and attacked Farid, only to be impaled by the vampire's hand. Mika told Yu to run, but instead, Yu picked up the gun and shot Farid in the head. As Mika collapsed in his pool of precious blood, Yu desperately tried to drag him to safety, but Mika pushed him away, urging him to leave while he still could. With tears streaming down his face and covered in Mika's blood, Yu fled the underground city. When he finally emerged, he encountered Gurren and his team from the Moon Demon Company, a human military group fighting against the vampires. Gurren labeled Yu as the hidden weapon from the Hayakuya Orphanage and offered him a chance to fight alongside them. Heartbroken and full of rage, Yu clung to Gurren, vowing to become their weapon and destroy every vampire in existence in memory of his lost family. Four years had passed since Yu lost his family to the vampires, and his heart had grown cold and angry. He was afraid to make new friends, fearing he might lose them too. Gurren, who had taken Yu in, placed him in a military school but hadn't spoken to him since. Desperate for attention, Yu tried to find a way to get suspended, hoping Gurren would call him to fight. Out of the blue, Shinoa, Yu's classmate, poked him and told him he needed to behave. She delivered a message from Gurren, Yu wouldn't be allowed to join the army until he made a friend. After class, Shinoa gave Yu a note from Gurren, which irritated him. As he left, Shinoa followed him, explaining that she needed to write a report on his behavior. Suddenly, they heard a commotion and found their classmate Yoichi being bullied. Yu initially ignored the situation, but when the bully called Yoichi livestock, he couldn't help but remember the vampire's cruel taunts. Shinoa warned him that Gurren wouldn't accept him if he attacked civilians. As a result, he gets beaten up and becomes bullied kid number two. While running errands for the bullies, Yoichi shared his reason for joining military school. He wanted to avenge his sister, who was killed by a vampire while protecting him. 
Yu bluntly told Yoichi he was too weak to join the army, which nearly brought Yoichi to tears. An explosion suddenly rocked a nearby building, and sirens blared a warning about an escaped vampire. Shinoa told the boys to find safety while she contacted the Moon Demon Company. Yu made up his mind to prove his worth to Guren. His heart pounding with anticipation and fear, he sprinted back into the school. Picking up his sword, he entered a classroom, where he found the vampire about to sink her fangs into a student. Yu intervened just in time, and the vampire shifted her attention to Yu, deciding to drink his blood instead. The vampire displays her incredible agility and strength, evading Yu's sword strikes and attacking ferociously with her razor-sharp nails. As the vampire lunged toward the girl she had initially targeted, Yoichi appeared out of nowhere, driven by his newfound courage. He tackled the vampire, distracting her and giving you a brief opening to attack. The vampire, angered by the interruption, lashed out at Yoichi, but you intercepted her with his sword. The vampire grabbed you by the throat and leaped out of a window with him. In midair, you managed to stab her in the abdomen, causing her to howl in pain. The vampire, though weakened, mocked you, saying she would drink his blood to regain her strength before the Moon Demon Company could arrive. Just as she prepared to do so, Gurren appeared, plunging his cursed blade into her heart and ending her life. When you asks Gurren to let him into the company already, Gurren replies that he hates brats who do not understand teamwork and refuses. Just then, Yoichi sees you. Yoichi hugs you, crying about how worried he was, but he knocks you out. Shinoa points out that Gurren will now have to keep his promise since you managed to make a friend after all, much to Gurren's shock. While unconscious from the battle, you dreamt of his family from the orphanage. Mika told him they were glad he made a friend because living for revenge was too painful. His family could finally stop worrying about him. As they walk away, Yu tells them not to go and he cries out Mika's name. He reaches his arm out and wakes up in a hospital bed, with Yao Chai by his side. Shinoa informed them that the army had approved of both their actions, and they were now accepted into the Moon Demon Company. After recovering, Yu was ready to take the next step as a member of the Moon Demon Company. Yurin, recognizing his growth, decided it was time to give him his own curse gear, a powerful weapon possessed by a demon. Yu, Yao Chai, and another kid followed Gurin to the ceremonial room where they would receive his curse gear. As they walked, Gurin explained the importance of the contract ceremony. Each curse gear contained one of the strongest demons sealed within, and they would need to find a way to be accepted by this demon in order to draw out the weapon's true power. As the ceremony began, Yu reached out and drew forth a sword with a green blade. In a trance-like state, Yu finds himself walking through a realm filled with clouds. The atmosphere is serene, but something feels off. He hears his name being called and turns to see Mika. Confused and suspicious, Yu demands that the demon stop imitating his family. Mika comments that he thought touching on Yu's most vulnerable part would affect him, but he's surprised to see that Yu isn't shaken. Yu commands the demon to give up and grant him the power he seeks. Black smoke pours out of Mika, who collapses, and a formless black mass rises in his place. The demon reveals itself. The demon inquires why Yu desires power so intensely. Yu responds that it's for revenge and because he lost his family. The demon claims it can give him limitless power for revenge, but suddenly, another orphan's voice interrupts, saying that it isn't enough. Yu turns to see the lifeless bodies of his orphanage family lying on the ground. The children ask you if he's going to abandon them again and question whether it's fair that he's the only one who gets to make friends and live happily. But Yu asserts that he hasn't forgotten about them. He screams at the demon to stop and demands the power to protect everything that matters to him. The demon agrees to follow Yu as long as his heart remains strong, but warns that it will take over his body if it senses any weakness. The demon introduces itself as a Shiromaru and reveals that there's something inside you that is no longer human, likely due to experimentation. Asuramaru advises you not to trust humans, as they can be more terrifying than demons or vampires. Yu awakens from the trance, holding the demon sword. As Yu observes his peers, he realizes that Kimizuki has successfully completed his trial, but Yoichi is still fighting with his demon. Suddenly, a loud blast erupts, and a cloud of dust fills the air. Durin explains that Yoichi has failed, and the demon is now possessing him. They see Yoichi, now transformed with sharp fingernails, pointed teeth, small horns, markings under his eyes, and slit pupils. Complaining about humans being a nuisance, he manifests a large green bow. Kirin orders Yu and Kimizuki to kill him, but Yu disagrees, knocking the bow from Yoichi's hands. Kirin reminds Yu that the demon is inside Yoichi, not the weapon. Meanwhile, Yoichi relives a painful memory of his sister telling him to stay hidden under the bed while she sacrifices herself to keep him alive. Tired of hiding, 
He declares that he wants the power to protect his friends and destroy his enemies. At that moment, he manages to conquer the demon and pass the trial. Overcome with emotion, Yoichi casts aside the bow and runs to you, hugging him tightly. Jiren acknowledges Yoichi's talent, but notes that guilt has been sapping his will to live. He encourages Yoichi to let go of revenge and focus on living to protect his friends. Turning to you, Girin tells him to forget about his old family and embrace this new one, as reveals they will form a squad led by Shino. With all three boys having acquired their cursed gears and demonstrating teamwork, Gurin decides to send them tomorrow to the front line to fight the vampires who are plotting to retake the city of Shinjuku. The next day, as the cargo truck nears the battlefield, the driver announces that they will arrive in just 15 minutes. The group braces themselves for the imminent fight. Shinoa, however, reveals that they are currently too weak to be of any real use on the front lines. In an effort to bolster their strength, she introduces them to a set of magic pills. Shinoa explains that these pills will enhance their synchronization with their demons, amplifying their abilities. Taking one pill increases a user's strength by one and a half times, while two pills double it. However, she warns them that if they take three pills, their internal organs will rupture, causing severe harm or even death. Each pill lasts for 15 minutes, but leaves the user extremely vulnerable once its effects wear off. Yu questions Shinoa about whether this is the true way to harness the power of the Cursed Gear. Shinoa admits that mastering Cursed Gear requires dedicated training. Unfortunately, they are short on time, and this risky strategy is their best chance at making a difference in the upcoming battle. Upon arriving at their destination, the group finds Gurren cornered and defenseless, facing a menacing vampire. Shinoa quickly orders her squad to take the pills to boost their strength, rescue Gurren, and then retreat. The team follows her command, eager to save their leader. As they move closer, the situation takes a turn for the worse when Gurren gets stabbed by the vampire. Enraged by the sight, Yu shouts at the vampire to get away from Gurren. He charges toward the enemy and with determination, he thrusts his cursed gear through the vampire's chest. The two lock eyes, and Yu's expression suddenly shifts from anger to shock. His eyes widen in disbelief. Yu is frozen with shock when he realizes he has just stabbed Mika, his long-lost childhood friend. Suddenly, Gurren orders Yu to use the blade curse and kill Mika, but Yu can't bring himself to obey. Gurren then tries to attack Mika himself, but Mika skillfully dodges the blow. Gurren punches Yu for his disobedience, but Yu apologizes and explains his connection to Mika. Tears streaming down his face, Yu feels immense guilt for having abandoned Mika in the past. Meanwhile, Mika and Farid, a vampire, discuss what to do with Yu as more noble vampires arrive on the scene. Seeing the danger, Gurren orders everyone to retreat, but Yu's escape is blocked by Farid. Farid taunts Yu, asking if he wants to play a game which triggers Yu's painful memories of the vampire killing his family. In a fit of rage, Yu attacks Farid, but is unsuccessful in defeating him. As the situation becomes more dire, Mika offers to help Yu escape the vampires, urging him to leave everything behind. Confused, Yu questions why Mika is with Farid, the one who killed their family. Mika dismisses Yu's concerns and carries him in his arms, explaining that humans are exploiting Yu for their own purposes. Despite Mika's pleas, Yu refuses to abandon his friends. However, when Yu looks back at his friends, he sees Shinoa crying as she is bitten on the neck by a vampire. Yu's emotional pain triggers a transformation within him. His left eye turns red and blood runs down his face as he enters a trance-like state. In this trance, Yu encounters a Suramaru on a golden plane. He suspects she's trying to possess him, but she denies it, explaining that she's afraid of the monster inside him, which seems like a god bringing judgment to the world. In this mystical vision, Yu sees seven massive trumpets and angels emerging from radiant beams of light. Asuramaru warns him that it's too late, and the non-human part of him is about to go wild. Back in reality, Yu starts transforming, with one eye turning completely black and a dripping, branch-like structure growing from his shoulder. Mika watches in horror as the transformation confirms his worst fears about humans. He tries to talk to Yu, but Yu only attacks him, destroying a gas station in the process. Crowley, a powerful vampire who has bitten Shinoa, approaches Yu. Yu swings his sword at Crowley with immense strength, destroying several buildings and leaving a massive crater in his wake. The destruction is immense, and onlookers can't help but be amazed and terrified at the sheer power Yu now wields. Crowley is initially unfazed by Yu's attacks but quickly realizes the danger he is in. Yu, now consumed by rage, summons his cursed gear and uses it to engulf Crowley in a towering pillar of blackness. At the top of the building-sized column, 
A halo of light forms and then widens, descending down the structure. As the light reaches the bottom, it envelops the entire dark mass, causing it to shimmer and then explode with incredible force. After the battle, you notices Shinoa and moves toward her, consumed by a desire to annihilate all sinners. As he attacks her, Mika jumps in front, sacrificing himself to protect you from further heartache. Guren shouts to Shinoa that she can still save you from his current state. Desperate, she leaps toward him and hugs him, begging him to return to normal. Yu finally snaps out of his transformed state, coughing up blood before collapsing to the ground. Watch this next video. See you on the next one.